Hey y'all, uh, what's up? We finna get into some hair tips, but first, this video is sponsored by Aveda. Aveda is just that girl when it comes to sustainable hair care. Aveda's formulas are cruelty-free and 100% vegan. They also use 100% post-consumer recyclable material in their packaging. And if that ain't enough, baby girl, they also are the first beauty company to manufacture all of their products using 100% wind power, okay? Through renewable energy credits and carbon offsets. Wow. That's the kind of stuff that I like to hear, okay? That's important to me because I need to know that my products are sustainable. So I went ahead and tried out some of their products from the Nutriplenish line. And this line is about hydrating your hair all through this like superfood complex. So I started with the Nutriplenish shampoo. This lathered like it was her middle name, baby girl. It was creamy, lightweight, moisturizing because it has that superfood complex. All of the shampoos from Aveda are also sulfate cleanser free. It cleaned my hair, did its job, but then I moved on to the Nutriplenish conditioner, which I think this is one of my new favorites. No, I'm sure of it. It has more slip than a than an ice cube on rubber. What? It doesn't have any silicones, no gluten or parabens or any of that yucky stuff. It made the tangling a literal breeze and it was moisturizing. Out of the shower, I went ahead and styled my hair. First, I used the daily moisturizing treatment. It was kind of medium weight. It wasn't lightweight or heavy, but it was decadent, okay? And it was clear that its job was to moisturize because it has that superfood complex, which is pretty much just a blend of plant oils and butters that are gonna give you sort of like a natural hydration. After that, I applied some Curl Gel A, which baby, this right here was lightweight, but she packed a whole punch. I'm just like impressed with Aveda. They are sustainable. They are thoughtful and intentional about the ingredients that they're using and the products like work, which is like <laughs> what I need. And on top of all of that, they created this thing called Pure Fume. What that is? Extracts from plants and flowers that gives you an aroma that evokes a sense of well being. Ah. Like, girl, what? It was just heaven. Period. So go right now on your keyboards to Aveda.com and look up more about these products and how you can get them. Or you can just go down to my description box and click the link there and you'll get all of the information that you need. Shout out to Aveda once again for sponsoring this video. And speaking of that, let's get back into it. What's good, everybody? My name is Will, and welcome back to another episode of Will in a, in a White Box. Girl, Will on a whim, okay? It is time for our yearly talk because the girls want to know how to be loving on their hair. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you to your face, okay? I ain't scared. So without further ado, here are five practical tips that are gonna help you on your journey to becoming moisturized and having like a Bantu knot that works out for once in your life. Step number one, protect your hair. So this one means a few different things. It means protecting your hair with protective styles. So Bantu knot, twists, braids, cornrows, all of these things bundle your hair strands. So I like to use this analogy every single time we talk about this. Imagine you have a chopstick, okay? You have a chopstick in your hand and you break it. Somebody dares you to break it, you break it. Boom. Real easy because it's just a chopstick. You can use your strength to do that. You're strong. But then they come back and they go, hey, I need you to break this bundle of chopsticks. So you try to break that, girl. It ain't going nowhere. You ain't that strong. That right there is what, in theory, protective styles do for your hair. So it bundles your hair strands so that when things go to sort of break it, it doesn't break. Girl, have you ever looked at your hair strands? They're thin. Like, e each individual one is very fragile. Ultimately, bundling them together will help prevent breakage. Protecting your hair, to me, also means bonnets, scarves, and any sort of non-abrasive material that you can put on your hair when it's sitting idly. You know what I mean? Like when you're sleeping or when you're just not doing anything, it's okay to put on a little bonnet, a cute whatever you want to do. We sleep like what? Six, seven, eight hours a night. All that time where we're not even like paying attention to what's happening to our hair. Tossing and turning. Girl, like you sleeping in a tire and it's just got pushed down a hill. All of that movement in the nighttime can pull and tug on your hair. And also, if you are sleeping on like cotton sheets or anything, those things can sort of dry out your hair over time. So it's nice to put on something protective during the night. Also, protecting your hair means protecting it from the sun and sort of like natural elements, but mostly like the sun. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but your hair over time, the protein in it can kind of break down with intense sun. So you need to like calm down. You know what I mean? Put a hat on if you can. Use an umbrella. It might seem extra, but baby girl, use it. All of that intense direct sunlight, like how we get it here in Arizona, can lead to discoloration if that's important to you, um, breakage, and dryness. Step number two is uh, 
to, to clean your hair. You're walking around here, you got gunk all up in your hair. So let's just call it what it is, girl. Your hair is dirty, okay? Creams, oils, gels, all of these things in your hair, you need to be able to clean that out properly. When product is sort of like stuck up in your hair and in your scalp, we call that buildup. And buildup can lead to all the things, you know, that you don't want for your hair. So there are different levels of cleaning depending on like what you put in your hair. Literal water and just use of your hands mechanically does a lot for your hair, but that is sort of on the minimal side of cleaning. Whenever I start washing my hair, I always start off with a warm water rinse and I just kind of like mechanically go through my hair and get any extra debris off and that starts the process off amazingly. Co-washes are sort of like a step above that in my mind where it's a, not necessarily about cleaning your hair. It will clean your hair but very gently and then on top of that it will moisturize your hair. So this is good for like midweek situations where you don't want to fully wash your hair but you kind of want to like rinse it off and start fresh. Then there are sulfate free shampoos which I would rate as sort of like a uh, a more intense cleaner than like a co-wash, but not so intense. It's sulfate free, so it's not going to strip your hair of oils and grab all of that that's there. So the shampoo from Aveda would be perfect here because it is free of sulfate cleansers. A nice gentle cleanser, and some people just are good using that. Me girl, I need something, something intense, like a sulfate shampoo. A sulfate shampoo and a cleanser, people say, people call it a cleanser, where it's like not necessarily sulfate. Cleansers are just other things that do, I would say, just as good as a job as a sulfate shampoo. So get you one of those, baby girl, and clean your hair. Don't play yourself and do it regularly, okay? Kick that greasy booty. What? Step three in this in this plan that I have for you to become the most moisturized person on earth is uh, to understand that you are what you eat. And some of y'all is dusty. Oh, and some of y'all out here is looking like salty hot chips. Wow. Yeah, I said it. You look like, uh, don't say it, bro. Pizza crust. A well-balanced diet will ensure that you have the main nutrient that most people talk about, which is biotin. Biotin helps with a lot of things. It helps with your nails. It helps with your hair. Um, but you can get this from a lot of different foods. Typically, if you're already eating sort of a well-balanced diet, you're good. But most things that have a lot of protein in it, like beans, lentils, um, meats, stuff like that, eggs, egg yolks. I like eggs. Incorporate those things into your diet if you're able to. That way you're feeding your hair internally exactly what it needs. Step number four is serious, okay? Because I talked to your scalp. Oh no, what did, yeah. what did she say? She's asking for a severance package. What? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. She said there was misconduct in the workplace. <gasps> she's suing you. No. You did her dirty and now she's out for revenge. Oh my God. She's flaking up on you. Listen, a lot of our hair routines are hair focused, but we also have to like take care of our scalp. My scalp care is constantly changing as like we move through the seasons when the air is a bit drier or a bit more humid. As I'm using new products, I just have to change up my scalp care. But right now, my scalp care routine consists of two different things, cleaning and moisture. So I make sure that I use that sulfate shampoo and I get up in my scalp with my hands, but mostly with a scalp massager. So if you haven't gotten a scalp massager or something that will help you lift that nasty gunk off your scalp, you need to invest in one. <laughs> I really think it just is a big help. And every time I use it, I come out of the shower and I know that my scalp is clean. And I can do my hair knowing that when I part my hair, I won't see like a bunch of gunk or like flake. And I find that when I use my scalp massager in addition to my sulfate shampoo, I have less itching. It just feels better. Now moisturizing your scalp is a little difficult depending on like which hairstyle you have. You can't like put too much water on things. We know how we are. We can't like go into the pool, baby girl, because we ain't want the braids to frizz up, period, period. But there are a lot of like scalp and hair oils out there that are great. That's what I use to kind of like keep my scalp balanced. And the last and final step, step number five, is the one that I think people struggle with the most, and that's moisturizing. This is the one that everybody cares about, right? Because you want your hair to be moisturized, because that's when it looks the best, that's when you feel the best about it, and that's when it's it's healthiest. So let's talk about moisturizing. What's most helpful, I would say, to start off here with is with hair porosity. So if you don't know your hair's porosity, which is just a term that we use to describe how well your hair can hold on to moisture. It describes how porous your hair strands are. If you didn't know your hair is made up of little proteins, they're like in the shape of scales. And so they kind of like overlap each other. And some people have more layers of those scales and some people have thinner. Okay, so when you have more layers of those scales, you typically are what we consider low porosity, 
Meaning like you ain't got that many holes up in your, in your hair stand. But when you have not that many, okay, you don't have many of those scales, you're high porosity. There's more pores in your hair strands. When you have more pores, your hair can't really hold onto moisture well. So you need to use thicker creams, thicker things that are gonna like keep that moisture in. And if you have low porosity, you might not want to use thicker things because sometimes that stuff gets trapped in those hair strands. And that's going to lead to buildup, which we talked about earlier. So what you can do is do a porosity test. It's very simple. You basically just take off like a hair strand, drop it in some water. If your hair is high porosity and it can't hold moisture, it will sink immediately. If your hair is low porosity, your hair will rise to the top and float. So once you know your hair's porosity, you'll know that it might be better for you to use something thicker or creamier or more on the liquid side, but it'll also tell you what to use in terms of protein. So y'all have heard of protein treatments and stuff like that. If your hair is high porosity, that means you ain't got that many layers of those scales, which means that you don't have that much protein. So you might wanna use like a mask or like a deep conditioner that has protein content in it. Like, and you can buy those specifically, just look them up. For example, the Aveda Envati Advanced Intensive Hair and Scalp Mask with rice protein is the perfect way to keep up a healthy moisture protein balance. And that will help you kind of like reinforce the protein structure of your hair strands. If your hair is low porosity, you might want to stay away from protein. <laughs> Cause you don't need all, any extra protein. What that will do is probably like stiffen your hair strands and it'll make your hair a little bit hard. Yeah, you ain't want that. You don't want that, it's crusty. So that's my advice there. Either way, you don't want to moisturize and clean, moisturize and clean, moisturize and clean. That's pretty much the kind of like ebb and flow of natural hair care. Just be patient with yourself, be patient with your hair, enjoy it okay have fun with the hairstyles have fun but these are some tips that can help you kind of like establish structure a routine uh so that you can have the healthiest hair that you possibly can have okay all that i can hope is that you all see your hair as beautiful and that it can do so many different things and that's just that's just cool okay but i also want you to see hair care the active kind of use of products and um hairstyles to take care of your hair and keep it healthy um, as self-care, right? Take that time to get to know yourself and get to know who you are through your hair. Okay, girl. All right. All right now. And also one more shout out to Aveda for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much. We love you. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope you all liked it. If you did, go ahead and give it a big old thumbs up. It helps a ton and it will help more people see this if they like also are in need of help um, for their hair routines. If you want to stick around and be my friend, be my homie, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and my second YouTube channel, Will on the Whim. You can also follow me on TikTok. Just don't follow me in real life. Hope to see you back here real soon for another episode of Will on the Whim. But until then, bye.